possible scientific explanations behind the ten plagues of ancient Egypt at the time of the Exodus uh, with Moses. The plagues, every spring, the Jewish people in the world over celebrate Passover, a holiday that recounts the Exodus, when according to the Torah, the Old Testament of the Bible, the uh, nation of Israel, the tribes of Israel, left Egypt for Israel, the promised land. However, before Moses could lead the 40-year journey through the desert, he needed the Pharaoh's permission to free the Jews who were slaves in the land of Egypt, according to the Torah. But the Pharaoh had a hard heart, prompting the Lord to send down ten plagues until the Pharaoh changed his mind, according to the Old Testament. Could any of these plagues have occurred through natural phenomena? Live science looked at possible scientific explanations behind each of the ten plagues. The uh, water of uh, the red water of blood. To unleash the first plague upon the Egyptians, Moses struck the river Nile with his staff, turning its waters to the color of blood. At the same time, his brother Aaron performed an identical transformation in the canals, tributaries, ponds, and pools throughout Egypt. After the water turned to blood, quote, the fish in the Nile died and the Nile stank so that the Egyptians could not drink water, end quote, according to the Bible, Exodus chapter 7, verse 21. The sudden appearance of red-hued waters in the Nile could have been caused by a red algae bloom, which appears when certain conditions enable a type of microscopic algae to reproduce in such great numbers that the waters they live in appear to be stained a bloody red. This phenomenon is known as red tide when it happens in oceans, but red algae are also well represented in freshwater ecosystems, and these algae blooms can certainly be harmful to wildlife, as the algae contain a toxin that can accumulate in shellfish and poison the animals that feed on them. Fumes from densely concentrated algae blooms can also disperse toxins in the air, causing breathing problems in people that live nearby. The frogs, what do we do next? After turning the nation's water supply to blood, the playbook says you inundate them with frogs. From the second plague, Moses allegedly conjured the vast quantities of frogs that swarmed into people's homes, even finding their way into the Egyptians' beds, ovens, and cookware. As it happens, the phenomenon of raining frogs has been reported multiple times throughout history and in a range of locations around the world. A report published July 12, 1873, in Scientific American, describes a shower of frogs which darkened the air and covered the ground for a long distance following a recent rainstorm. The account was one of dozens of similar anecdotes collected in the Book of the Damned, 1919, though its somewhat skeptical author suggested that the frogs may have simply dropped from trees. And in May 2010 in Greece, thousands of frogs emerged from a lake in the northern part of the country likely to, to search for food and disrupted traffic for days, according to CBS News. Lice. The third plague, lice, could mean either lice, fleas, or gnats, based on the Hebrew word kinim. If a toxic algae bloom led to the first plague and the pile of dead frogs followed, it's not surprising that a swarm of insects of some sort would have followed. That's because frogs typically eat insects, and without them, the fly population could have exploded. Stefan Flugmacher, a climatologist, Leipzig Institute for Water Ecology and Inland Fisheries in Berlin, Germany, said in a television special about the plagues that aired on National Geographic Channel in 2010, interestingly, both body lice and fleas can theoretically transmit the bacteria Yersinia pestis, which cause bubonic plague according to a 2010 study published in the journal Emerging Infection, Infectious Diseases. So if then an infestation with lice could have set the stage for the later plagues, such as boils, a 2008 review of plague science found, scientists have also er argued that the sickness that killed the beasts of the field for Egyptians in later plagues might have been blue tongue or African horse sickness, both of which can spread by insects from this plague, according to a 2008 Yale Journal of Biology and Medicine. Wild beasts. 
once again, the Hebrew word for the fourth plague, Arov, is ambiguous. It roughly translates to a mixture, and over the years, rabbis had interpreted the word to mean either wild animals, hornets, or mosquitoes, or even wolf-like beasts that prowl in the night, according to biblical commentary found in the Exodus Rabbah 11.3, Tanchuma va area 14. Most commonly, people interpret the text to mean wild animals such as venomous snakes or scorpions or even lions or bears. However, according to a 1996 study published in the journal Caduceus, which attempts to explain the plagues as epidemi epidemiological problems caused by an initial climate disturbance, J.S. Marr and C.D. Malloy argue that the fourth plague represents a swarm of flies such as the stable fly Stomoxis calcitrans, and bites from these flies could have led to the boils that occurred later on in the story, according to that study. Then you have the diseased livestock. The fifth plague called down on Egypt was a mysteriously and highly contagious disease that swiftly killed off the Egyptians' livestock. The, this biblical scourge is reminiscent of a real plague known as rinderpest, an infectious and lethal viral disease that decimated populations of cattle and other ruminants across Africa and Europe from the 18th through the 19th centuries. Rinderpest was caused by a virus in the same family as canine distemper and measles. Infected animals developed a high fever, diarrhea, and ulcers in their mouths and noses. And according to the manual diagnosed rinderpest produced by the Food and Drug Agriculture Association of the United Nations, this, the disease is thought to have originated in Asia and traveled to Egypt 5,000 years ago along prehistoric trading routes. This is what the New York Times reported in 2010. Its mortality rate was exceptionally high, often exceeding 80%. It killed an estimated 200 million cattle in the 18th century, according to a study published in the journal Medical History 1997. And when rinderpest emerged in Africa in the 19th century, it killed 5.2 million cattle, causing a third of the population of Ethiopia to die of starvation, a study published in the journal Science Report in 2008. Rinderpest was last diagnosed in Kenya in 2001 and was declared completely eradicated in 2010, according to New York Times. Then you have the boils. Shortly after the Egyptians' livestock died off, they were distracted by the sixth plague, an extremely uncomfortable plague of boils that covered their bodies. Boils are painful bumps usually surrounded by red swollen skin and are typically caused by Staphylococcus aureus, a type of bacteria commonly found on the skin surface according to the Mayo Clinic. An outbreak of the highly infectious disease smallpox, which causes distinctive raised blisters, could result in a large number of people simultaneously coming down with rashes and welts. Smallpox is thought to have affected communities in Egypt at least 3,000 years ago, based on evidence of smallpox scars found on several mummies dating back to that period, including the mummy of Pharaoh Ramesses V, according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Fiery hail, the seventh plague, brought a heavy hail accompanied by thunder and streaming fire. The chaotic weather struck down people, livestock, and trees. Although uh, uh, the area of Goshen, where the Israelites lived, was spared, according to the book Tanakh, new uh, translation of the Holy Scriptures, the uh, nearby volcanic eruption uh, about 3,500 years ago of Thera Santorini, an island in uh, north of Crete in the Aegean Sea of Greece, may explain this plague as well as others. It's possible that the volcanic ash mixed with thunderstorm above Egypt, leading to the dramatic hailstorm, Nadine von Blom from the Institute of Atmospheric Physics in Germany told the Telegraph. The locusts, when the Pharaoh once again refuses to let the Jewish people go, hungry locusts descend as the eighth plague. Moses warned the Pharaoh, they shall, come, they, they shall cover the surface of the land so that no one will be able to see the land. Such a pestilence would devour all the remaining plants and the hail, uh, that the hail did not destroy, Moses said, according to the Tanakh. The volcanic eruption on Santorini may have created favorable conditions for the locusts, said Ciro Trevisanto, a Canadian 
molecular biologist and author of The Plagues of Egypt, Archaeology, History, and Science, look at the Bible. The ash fallout caused weather anomalies, which translates into higher precipitations, higher humidity, Trevistano said, and that's exactly what fosters the presence of the locusts. Darkness. The plague of darkness may have been a solar eclipse or a cloud of volcanic ash, scholars say. According to the Old Testament, a darkness so thick that people could not see one another descended on Egypt for three days. However, the Israelites enjoyed light in their dwellings, according to the book of the Old Testament. The, uh, perhaps a darkness coincided with the eclipse on March 5th, 1223 BC. And you can see the path here on uh, NASA's website, according to the study written by uh, Yuri Mosenkis, an archaeoastronomy researcher who lives in the Ukraine. But the fact that Israelites had light in their homes means that lights out for the eclipse hypothesis, as it does not make uh, scientific sense why some people, but not others, could overcome the darkness. Another idea is that the volcanic eruption about 3,500 years ago in Santorini, the island north of Crete, in the Aegean, spewed ash that caused the darkness, according to National Geographic Special, as reported by the Telegraph, but the eruption happened about 500 miles from Egypt and before the Exodus event, according to the Christian Courier. Now, the firstborn, uh, the demise of the firstborn. In the tenth, the last plague, Moses tells Pharaoh that all the firstborn in the land of Egypt would perish. Perhaps the algae bloom that turned the river's red, blood red released mycotoxins, poisonous substance that could cause disease and death in humans, according to a 2003 review in the journal Clinical Microbiology Reviews. Grain contaminated with these mycotoxins could have been deadly and could explain the death of the firstborn children, said epidemiologist John Marr, who was the chief epidemiologist at the New York City Department of Health, as reported by Slate. The firstborn might have been the first to pick the grain and thus would have fallen victim to it as first as well, according to the Telegraph. This is from Life Science Staff on Bended Reality. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.